hey guys what's up and welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Emem on this channel we do lifestyle and vlogs but today I'll be doing something different and if you're returning subscriber thank you so much for coming back in today's video from the title you can see I'll be doing how to get a permanent resident here in Belarus as a student or not as a student whichever one you are so without wasting so much time let's just get right into this video for those of you who don't know, I'm a graduate of Gordon State Medical University. I graduated in the year 2020 and I recently obtained my permanent resident. So I'll be telling you the steps on how to apply for a permanent Belarusian resident. And I'll also tell you why I think you should, my reasons, because a lot of people may have reasons why they want to apply. And also some people will ask themselves, is there any point of me applying for a Belarusian permanent residence? So these are my own reasons why I think you should apply for it. So the first reason will be the registration you do yearly. So I think not having to do that, it's a relief because we end up spending so much money every year the price for this registration keeps increasing so that will be a cut in your expense <laughs> so the second one is free medicals you know insurance you always buy insurance and um, with a belarusian pr you will not need to buy any insurance because your medicals will be free the third one is work you know when you come to belarus your visa is a student visa and you are not required to work having a permanent resident will make you be able and eligible to apply for work fourth one will be leaving the country without exit visa to visa required countries we know recently there was a rule that went around saying those who have temporary residents are not allowed to apply to countries that need visa with a permanent resident, you'll be able to apply to countries where visa is needed without having to go back to your own country as in new rural states. I don't know whether it's into practice yet or not. I have no idea. Before the steps, I'm going to give you two reasons to know you've qualified for the Belarusian permanent resident. The first one is having lived here for five years with a temporary resident. Before it was seven years, but recently the rule has changed, so you can apply after five years of stay here in Belarus with a temporary resident. The second being you haven't exceeded 90 days stay outside the Republic of Belarus on a temporary resident, so you won't be eligible to apply. But I've heard you could appeal to the immigration, right, the military in Minsk. I don't really know how true that. Right now, I'll be listing the documents you need, the general documents you are going to need at the end of your application before you submit. So, the application form, translated and notarized passport data page, including your registration page, your international passport, medical certificate, permanent address, your registration of your permanent address, which you will use to apply for the PR. You need four passport size four by five you need an autobiography you need receipt of payment of the state of duty and also your fingerprints so now to the steps the first step is translating and authorizing your passport data page including your registration we have different centers where we can do that in your state you know where to go translate and authorize it the next is sending documents back to a Belarusian embassy. Now I'm going to divide this part into 2A and 2B. 2A are for those who want to send it to Nigeria, to the Belarusian embassy there in Nigeria, or those who want to go through the Russian route, send it to the Nigerian embassy in Russia, or it could be from a different country and you decide to use Russia where your country's embassy is there. That's for 2B. Right now, we're talking about 2A. So for 2A, there are different documents you need to send home. Some of them can be scanned and sent through the email. Some have to be sent physically in hard copy. So the first thing you're going to do is print out the police report form and fill in the necessary information and the term print. I want you to know there are two forms. The female form is red and the male form is black. So after printing it and scanning it, you can email it back to the person who will be helping you if you're not the one 
during the process. The next important document is the authorization letter. Authorization letter is a letter you write on behalf of the person who is doing the process in the Belarusian embassy for you in Nigeria. This letter has to be notarized and translated, translated and notarized, and it could be done in the notarization center in your different states. So it's really important and it has to be sent through DHL and email. You cannot scan and send this document. It has to be received in its original copy. So right now I'm going to divide it into two, the scanned and the one you have to send through DHL or EMS, whichever means you want to send. So the two original copies you have to send home are your translated and notarized copy of your data page, including your registration page. The second one is the authorization letter notarized and translated that you have to send. The other document you can scan is the police report filled properly with your thumbprint. You can scan that one and send through the email. The second one you can scan is your identification card. You can scan and send through an email. And the third one is your birth certificate. That one too can also be scanned and sent through the email. So those are the documents you have to send back home. Now the third step is whoever is helping you now they've received the documents at home in Nigeria for example. So whoever is helping you out will have to go to the police station and submit the printed police um, report form and obtain the police reports which is valid for three months from the date of collection. I'll get back to that. Next thing after collection of the police report form is the legalization in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. When you go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to legalize it, there's a slip or a receipt they're going to give you. Make sure you receive this receipt because after legalization in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, you have to go to the Belarusian Embassy and this receipt will be requested. So make sure it's an original receipt you obtained from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So after the police report form is gotten, it's going to legalize in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The next thing is the Belarusian Embassy in Nigeria. After all that is being sent back to you. Now remember, the date starts counting, the three months of validity of the police report starts counting from the moment it's taken from the police station. So three months is counting. So when it gets back to you, whatever process you have to do, you have to finish it in the space of that three months. If not, you will not be giving your Belarusian permanent resident. So the fourth step when it has gotten back to you, you have to do your medicals. First thing I advise you is you should start looking for an address where you have to register for your permanent resident make sure you look for an address while all this process of the nigerian stuff is going on you look for an address once you have that address then you can go ahead and do step four these medicals last for one month so that's why i'm advising you to have an address and the landlord of that particular home is certain because these people they can change their mind today they'll say oh they're going to help you the next time they say they're not going to help you and bear in mind that it's being paid except you have a very nice and loving landlord maybe your temporary resident landlord can become your permanent resident landlord but most times they don't accept you have to pay it depends on the amount wherever you meet it could range from 300 400 200 dollars whatever your agreement is so your medicals is the fourth thing you have to do the fifth thing you're going to do is translate and notarize the police report that was sent back to you. Make sure everything is still in the frame, time frame of three months. Number six, you're going to submit the following documents at the region where your permanent address is. We know we have Leninsky and Oktyabrisky. So depending on where your permanent resident address is, that's the immigration you're going to submit your documents. So these are the list of documents you have to submit when you are done. So the application form. This application form is filled in Russian. If you don't know Russian, you can pay someone to help you. You could give a friend or the landlord who gave you his permanent, his or her permanent address could help you fill this form. It's written and filled in Russian. So if you know Russian, kudos. If you don't know, you need help. The next document you have to submit is your medical certificate. 
The next is your four passport four by five. The next document is the photocopy of all pages of your registration. So all pages of your registration you've done the moment you stepped your leg into Belarus. For whether you have an old or new passport, you're going to combine all this registration and photocopy them. Next is autobiography written in Russian. This I had to pay the person who gave me a permanent address. That's who I paid to help me write this because it's in Russian. So you need someone to help you or if you can do it, that's very nice. The next is photocopy of your passport data page. Next document is a translated and notarized copy of your police reports. Receipt of payment of state of duty. You have to pay 58 Belarusian rubles. Maybe it will change at the time you're doing yours. Don't forget to tell whoever is helping you out in the bank to pay. Specify which region you're paying for because they all have different accounts which is entering. So if you're paying for Octa Brisky, tell them this payment is for permanent resident in Oksha Brisky region. If you're paying for Leninsky, you specify this payment for Leninsky region. Always remember that. The next document you're going to submit is your fingerprints. Now this fingerprint could be the last document you're going to obtain because it's after you've gone to the immigration of your region to show them the document you have ready. They're going to give you a spraf card which you take to the police station to get your fingerprints obtained. So the fingerprint will be obtained on the day of submission, not before. After all these documents has been sent, an immigration officer will stop by your house to ask you some few questions. How many people are living here? How many rooms? Where do you school? What do you do? That sort will be asked. And after that, a letter will be sent to your post office box three months from the date you submitted your application. Do well to check. If it exceeds three months, you could go to immigration where you submitted your documents to ask them how far now, what's going on, should I wait more, did I not submit everything. So guys, after this letter has been sent to your post office confirming you have been allowed to receive a permanent resident, the next thing you're going to do is go to registration center with your landlord and sign agreements based on the permanent address he or she gave you. The second thing is an application form will be given to you by the immigration, which should be filled in Russian and Belarusian language. You need help filling this form. Most of the times you have to pay. There are business centers where passport printing is done and you can go there and pay them to help you fill this form. The next thing you're going to pay another money for state of duty, 58 Belarusian rubles. There's an express payment for you to be able to receive this permanent resident in seven days. You have to pay an additional 58 rubles. If you want to wait for 15 days, you have to pay an additional 29 rubles to the 58 rubles you've already paid. The next thing is submission of documents. Right now, I'll be listing the documents you need for the second submission. So the first thing you need is the receipt of the second payment you made for state of duty. The next document you'll be submitting is the application for the permanent resident, the one that was written in both Belarusian and Russian language. And the next thing you need is the application, the agreement you did for the permanent address at the registration center with your landlord, the Dagavo, and all those documents you need, you get after registration. And the next one is the photocopy of your data passport page is needed again. And the next thing is your birth certificate. When I went for my submission, I was asked why I didn't have it, but I advised you to have a birth certificate, the original copy. They just want to see it and it will be returned back to you. You're not actually submitting it to them. After this, you wait for the amount of days you paid for. If you paid just 58 rubles one month, if you did the additional 29 or 58 rubles, you wait according to the days you paid for. Next step is step 11, when you collect your permanent resident. The first thing you have to do is go to the registration center based on the region of where your permanent address is. So mine, I had to go to Octabriske region for my registration and I paid a sum of 14.5 Belarusian rubles. 
After that, I had to do another registration at Leniske region because that is where my temporary resident is. So you may be lucky, the place where your permanent resident is, is where you're actually living and you have to just make one sum of 14.5 Belarusian rubles. After all this is done, you have to go to school to tell them, oh, you have a permanent resident now and you want to cancel your registration you have with school. So you submit your passport to them and you think you collect it after one week and your registration is canceled. Voila! You are leaving and connecting directly with immigration, not having to go through school again. So that's just it. And if you have questions, please let me know in the comment section or you can send me an email. You could check my email in the description box. I'm open and ready to answer any question you have. Just know that things may change because every time things are changing and these are all the things I did while I was applying for mine. Thank you guys for watching up to this point. I'm really grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.